We come to you this week from the state of Alaska. This vast, remote, rugged place has the highest per capita veteran population in the nation, and it's growing. Why do so many veterans come here? How do they live? And how does a government whose wars they fought care for them? We spent almost a week here covering a lot of miles to bring you some answers. Alaska is a state of contrasts. It is snow-capped mountains and glaciers, lakes and rivers, bald eagles, and moose in the wild. It is also modern cities, mountain towns, and poor, dusty fishing villages. A place with so few roads, if you don't have a plane or boat or know someone who does, you don't get around much. Beneath it all is a certain commonality, a spirit that binds together those who live here. And a lot of them are veterans. Alaska has less than half a million people, and roughly one-fifth are veterans. Seems most got their first exposure to the state through military duty. There are seven major installations, like Elmendorf Air Force Base in Anchorage, with hundreds of satellite locations. But it doesn't take long to get hooked on this state. Take Drew Dix, a Colorado boy who enlisted at 17, spent 20 years in the Army, receiving the Congressional Medal of Honor for risking his life, taking a Vietnamese town back from the communists, capturing prisoners and rescuing Americans. Today, he's a bush pilot, living in a log cabin, chopping his own wood, in the interior mountain town of Manly Hot Springs. Population, about 100. A lot of mosquitoes in the, this time of year, and it, they get all over the, the windshield. In 1968, I was sent up here on a training mission. And um, I knew then, it was in the winter too, and it was 50-some below zero, but there was something about Alaska that that I knew I'd come back someday. Uh, maybe it was the, the just the ruggedness, the, the challenge of, of being aware of your existence just to to uh, to survive and what it takes. I think that uh, an awful lot of people that join the, the military are looking for something. Excitement, adventure, to be challenged. Exits and all that. Even if they found that in the military or didn't, it's those type of people that make up Alaska. Dix ferries people and supplies all over the state for business and recreation. One of his more notable clients being Iditarod champion Susan Butcher. I really don't care much to just fly in an airplane, but I really like to be able to go places that the only way you can get to is by airplane. You have so many people that come here from civilization, and I, I have, a, it's a good connection between civilization and the wilderness, and um, I like to, um, I do a lot of recreation work too, and you, you find people that come up here from the big city, and the deeper into the bush they go, their eyes get wider. And, and you, you're landing on a lake or a river somewhere and you get ready to put them off. And then when you leave, you know their eyes are really wide when, <laughs> when they aren't here in your airplane anymore. And there's an undeniable sense of community in places like this that only veterans can know. When you don't have a lot in common talking about other things, you find out they're veterans and you really have a lot in common. And there is a, uh, a, a network, and it's a, it's a real um, good feeling. It's a, it's a brotherhood that's uh, linked um, throughout the, the bush. Wait, wait, Vietnam wait, wait, wait. veteran Bill Gavin has opted for another sort of rugged existence. He's a sport fishing guide on the Kenai River, home of the largest king salmon in the world. Well, my job is to take people who've never had a rod and reel in their hand before and make them catch king salmon that can weigh in excess of 50, 60, 70 pounds. It's going to break the water pretty quick. Here it comes. Little hey, ball. rainbow. Oh, there he goes. Great. Our luck didn't get any better, but never mind. Gavin had a chance to show off his corner of the world and tell us how he got here. It dates back to when he lost part of his leg in an ambush. 
on the medevac plane back from Vietnam, I decided that the first place that the plane landed, that's where I was going to move. And believe it or not, it landed in Elmendorf Air Force Base. I was so thrilled just to be alive. And that thrill of, of being close to death really makes a person appreciate little things in life, big things, beautiful things. And when I saw Alaska, uh, it just reinforced my desire to move up. Gavin conducts his fishing charters from this riverfront cabin. Being 80% disabled, he especially likes taking out other disabled folk, like fellow Vietnam vet Gene Nelson. I've always wanted to cater to disabled nice people nice boat, and Bill. show them my Alaska. Very well Give them some of the thrills and some of the beauty that I see every day. And to watch the smile on their face is well worth it. I couldn't imagine living in a big city anymore, putting up with traffic, putting up with people, air pollution. Smell that air. This is as best as it gets. This is the, it doesn't get any better than this. For some other veterans, it doesn't get any better than this, a fishing village in western Alaska called Bethel. It's a long way out, for us a nearly three-hour twin auto ride from Anchorage, over miles of mountains and flat, barren, uninhabited terrain. Bethel is little more than a community church, cemetery, hamburger stand, courthouse, fish processing plant, and a couple of subdivisions. Don't let this closed sign fool you. Someone actually lives here, round back. It's a dry town where alcoholism is still a problem. But Bethel is also home to VFW post 10,041. Members tell us they make a decent living as lumber contractors, carpenters, electricians, and government employees. And we soon understood why they chose to do it here. I wanted to get away from civilization, per se. You know, I, I wanted to get out of the big city. And uh, I found it here in Bethel. I like being able to go up river when I want to. I like to be able to go bear hunting. I want to I want to moose hunt when I want to. I want to catch fish when I want to. I want to be able to go where I want to go and do what I want to do when I want to do it. I like the 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 freedom. It's the rules and regulations. We have no more than we absolutely have to have. Nothing is hectic out here. Nobody gets excited. Um, for example, if the power goes out and uh, nobody gets real excited, they know it's going to come back on later. Who cares? No credit cards, no insurance, no property taxes, no rent, no mortgage. It's kind of a nice, easy life. No driver's license. Bad part about it is no toilet, no shower. You got, you got a honey bucket and a steam bath. I went back into Anchorage and uh, just tried to get a credit card. You know, I haven't had a credit card for 12 years. I tried to get a credit card through pennies and Sears and, and so on and so forth. Well, you don't have any credit, you know. I said, well, I pay everything, I pay by cash. You know, out here in the bush, we do by cash. And everybody accepts cash out here, or barter, or trade, or a uh, handshake. Or a handshake. Really what makes this, this this place so unique and for the whole state, I'm not just talking about Bethel, but I'm talking about the whole state, is the people. The greatness of the people. Well, they care for each other, they watch out for each other, they keep an eye on each other, and then if you do achieve, everybody's happy for you. And if you're having a problem, they try to help you too. 